Are you sure that the morphology of Kyle's butter can be expressed? I think it's right. Back now. I bracket four plus four square root two i plus four plus five plus four square root bracket j. What was the second one? I didn't get that one. Uh, five plus four root two. J, is that right? Okay. So, now here's where the visual representations of things come into play. Um, this is what we're required to prove. This is meant to be um, the velocity of Kyle's boat, right? So, when I'm thinking about this, a few things that I need to think about. First of all, they give us a visual representation. Now, initially they didn't give you that, I gave you that. Um, I think it's probably a bit mean to just expect you to be able to create that from the words there. It's quite complex, right? Um, so I'd hope in an exam they give you some sort of visual cues for this. So we've got this guy moving at 5 meters per second. And you can think about that as a vector, right? There's no horizontal component. It's just a vertical component. So that's 0i plus 5j, right? Um, what other things are happening here? We've got... The water flowing, cool. So how fast is the water flowing, James? Four meters per second. So, right. so four meters per second. Four yeah, good. So that's four i plus zero j. Yeah, orange juice. I'm more of an apple juice guy myself. But. And what's happening with this uh, wind here? Eight, uh, eight, meters per eight meters per second. Okay, we'll leave that there for now. Now this falls under our, our sort of applications type question, right? This is kind of like an applications of vectors question where it doesn't really fall into any of the specific categories of like projectile or you know um, projections or geometry proofs, right? But it's literally taking what you know about vectors, applying them to a real world scenario, right? And what's the goal of the question? We want to show that, Kyle, what do we need to show in this question? Okay, cool. So how are we going to approach this? I guess what you want to first think about is get an idea of what's happening, right? You're trying to get across the river, but there's all these different forces acting upon you, right? You've got the, the wind, you've got uh, the river flowing. How do we sort of put this all together? Um, James, what did you start by doing? I drew it out. Drew it out? Good. Like, please, when you're in your exams, draw diagrams. Like, I think it's really helpful, even though the diagrams are already there, like, when you have created it yourself and when you start annotating on it, then you'll start, like, be able to to pick up things that you might not have picked up on if it was just printed, right? Yeah, and then after you drew it, what next? I found the vectors horizontally and vertically and had them together. Okay, so where, which parts exactly, sorry? So, like, I'm trying to like, go through my working, mm. give me a hot second. That's all right, just have a read through. Yeah. Well, any other thoughts while James is having a look at that, what you might want to do? Yeah, where do you want the triangle? Where do you want the triangle? This one here? Yeah. Cool. Cool, yeah? Oh, how do you know that? Well, I didn't use your weird root. I just made a new triangle. Yeah. And made the A moves per second in time. Like There's a big clue for why this is 45. It is 45 degrees. It's a big clue why. <laughs> well, not every right angle triangle has a 45 degree angle there, right? Would you agree? It's a big clue for what is 8 meters per second. That is the... I don't, want, I don't want to draw an arrow because that's confusing. I'll draw it in brackets. What, is, what actually is that? The wind speed? And where's the wind coming from? Southwest, Southwest right? So if, if you think about your compass bearings, right, if it's coming from the southwest, can you see what angle that's going to create? That's going to create your 45 degree angle over here, right? So that's from the southwest, yeah. Yep, okay. So you can see you have to read between the lines. They're not going to spell it out for you. They'll give you the information you need. It's just, you're just going to have to read between the lines a little bit. Why would they tell you it's from Southwest? Is that just for fun? Like, I think we're moving away from giving you information that's not, like, remember how in, prim in primary school or junior high school, they might do that as distractors, right? I think we're moving away from that nature. See, every piece of information should serve some kind of purpose, right? So that's why it's a 45 degree angle. And then what do you want to do next after that? Well, the other lines are the exact same size. Yep, this guy's a... A line. Yep. Here's a line, yeah. 
What's the significance of, of creating this triangle now? Well, well it's, a, it's a triangular one. No, no, what's the one? The right the angle one. The <laughs> <laughs> two sides are the same. Uh, as, oh dear, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> equilateral. Oh no. Isosceles? So then what do we know about this side here then? It's the same as that side. So four, you reckon? No. No? <laughs> no. Why not? Okay, and this is where sort of constructing the triangle here is actually a bit unhelpful. Why is that? Oh, right, sorry. So you wanted a new triangle originally. Okay, so we'll draw a new triangle. Why do we need to draw a new triangle there? Yeah, because this is the, the river, right? And this is the wind. So they're like these different... The whole idea is that you've got all these different forces acting and you need to address them separately. So this is the wind here, right? Uh, and so because... We can still maintain the same angles and stuff, right? Um, and there's still an isosceles triangle. But what that means now is that you've created a new... You've constructed a new question. Yes, Eva, yeah. What are we actually trying to find? Like, what is that? Like, what is the isosceles? So, I guess what you want to think about it is you've got all of these different forces acting on Kyle's boat. Right? And so we want to show the velocity of Kyle's boat can be expressed as these two vectors here. So the velocity is going to be expressed as, two, as a vector, essentially. Because like ultimately, Kyle is going to be moving after the river is moving, after he's rowing, and after the wind's going. He's going to be going in some direction. It might be like that or something else. Right? We want to show that the vector that represents where Carl, the direction that Kyle is going is this guy over here. Does that kind of make sense a little bit? Like, because that's essentially what's happening here. You've got all these different things happening and this should represent Carl's movement. In the next question, we're going to find the actual speed, which I'll show you how to do in a second as well. So okay. Yeah. You break that in, so you find, X, you find the x values. Mm -hmm. So for this one? Yeah. And how do we do that? So, um, eight squared by the, oh, uh, root eight squared by the. Yeah, so it's just Pythagoras, so it's two, um, two x all squared, no x plus x, x squared plus x squared, 2x squared, sorry, equals to 8 squared. Cool. Yep, yeah, so, yeah, okay, I'm not going to skip too many steps, that's when I get confused. So it's, so 8 squared is 64 divided by 2 is 32, so x is equal to square root of 32, and we can also write that as 4 root 2. Okay, so can you see, as you're going along, always refer back to it. Because if we're expected to show this, you should be thinking to yourself, where do these numbers come from? You already have two of the numbers. What are the two of the numbers? Yeah, so when Eva, when you're asking, like, oh, what are we actually trying to do? Like, can you see a bit of a hint is like, what is this? This is 4i plus 0j. This is 0i plus 5j. And we've actually already got like two of those parts already. So kind of look for these little clues about what they're leaving you and how to approach these problems, right? Um, and then now, even better, I've got this guy. This guy is, well, which one did I, well, x is either of these, yeah. yeah. So then I made those both into vectors, so mm. like four root two i plus zero j and then zero. Yeah, so this vector, this eight meters per second, this vector can be written as, like that's the, that's the speed that I'm going at, right? But the vector itself is not a number. The vector is not a number, right? The vector has to be defined in terms of magnitude and direction, right? So it's how far I'm going and in which direction I'm going, okay? So this, as a vector, this wind as a vector is actually 4 root 2 i plus 4 root 2 j, okay? So let's put that all together now, right? So Yeah, add them all together. Can you see how that kind of works? We call that the resultant vector. It's like, you've got all these vectors coming along here. I want to find his actual speed at the end, right? That's the resultant vector. I don't know if they actually use, they say, yeah, they say, okay, so if a component vector is in that i and j part, they don't tell you that it's the resultant vector. But again, like, the intuition is there, I, I, I hope, right? So let's add them all together. Um, so now the uh, Kyle's vector, I guess, let's call it is going to be 4i plus 4 root 2, oh. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter which order you do it. 
let's let's keep it as we got it. So four i plus five j plus four root two i plus four root two j, and then all they've done is they've put the i's and j's together, right? And it's really important if they ask you to show something, like get to that point. Don't just leave it like this, right? So I'll just group them up first. Yeah, and then we can just uh, factorize out that. That's the technical term. Yeah, just chuck it. That's meant to be J. Yeah, thank you. And there's birds are going ham. All right, cool. And you see, there's a bit of work there, right? But how many marks is that one? Two, right? Okay. So now the next one's a one mark question. And again, look at the marks and think about, hey, why might they only give me one mark for this? It's because they don't want necessarily you to spend a lot of time, or they want you to see a particular angle. And remember how I said, going back to this, that the wind speed was eight meters per second, but the vector itself was four root two i plus four root two j. So hopefully that's a bit of a clue for what you need to do here. If I actually construct this triangle out with these two vector components, my horizontal component is 4 plus 4 root 2. My vertical component is 5 plus 4 root 2. Joel, what do you reckon I need to do then? Oh, you just need to do some Pythagoras and square root. That's it? Yeah, we just use Pythagoras theorem on these two values here to find out what this guy is. You want to go ahead and do that for me? Look the other one, Jones. 14.381 uh, meters. Okay, let's actually do it. 4 plus 4 root 2 squared plus 5 plus 4 root 2 squared is equal to, what's that going to be? No, hypotenuse. Go back to the good old h. And so h is equal to the square root of, can you put that in a calculator? Someone put it in a calculator. You could have just squared that and then told I think it's like 227 or something like that, but yeah. Cool. And that's how you find your speed, right? Because oh, I actually should use V for velocity. Did it say velocity? No, speed, yeah. So two decimal places, so 3, 8. Oh, what have I forgotten here? Angle. Meters per second. second, thank you. If it's velocity, we need an angle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So. Um, so, I guess the emphasis is on like breaking down a problem and thinking about, obviously, if you don't know what they're looking for, it's hard for you to answer the question, right? But just think about that they're not going to ask a question beyond the realm of your ability. You have to be able to know how to solve these problems through the content you've learned. So even if it's just like thinking about oh, adding vectors or finding magnitudes, like these are all things that you're able to do, right? It's just wrapping it up in a different context. And don't forget you into the end because, you know, they are kind of harsh with their marking scheme on that one. But yeah, that's uh, applications for them. Uh, next lesson, we'll hopefully look at geometry and projectile motion. And that will kind of bring us to the end of the vectors revision part. Mm -hmm.